Well, thank you, Terry, for those announcements and updates regarding uh, APC. And thank you, uh, Jordan, for leading us in worship today. And thank you for joining us online again. It's just a privilege to have you here. Uh, today, we are continuing our series under construction as we look at growing godly character through the fruit of the Spirit. Last Sunday, we talked about the fact that there is only one fruit or one nature of the Spirit that has been given to us at salvation. Uh, the Holy Spirit indwells, indwells us and, and each of the fruit of the Spirit has a specific role within our lives. Today, we're going to specifically look at love, which is the first virtue or attribute principle, if you will, that we see the Apostle Paul giving to these converted Gentiles as well as ourselves in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So let's read from our text uh, from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. This will be the base or foundational text for the next nine Sundays. Let's read it together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So let me just say this before continuing today. Without love, there is no gospel. Think that through for a second. Without love, there is no redemption. Without love, there is no relationship between God and man. Without love, there is no forgiveness. Without love, there is no eternal life with Jesus. Love must be and is the very foundation to which all of Christianity is hinged. 1 John 4 verse 9 says this, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God demonstrated his love to humanity by providing a way for eternal right relationship with himself. And that was fulfilled through giving us Jesus. Now, love is an interesting word and an interesting virtue. It's something that exists in each of our lives on some particular level uh, and can be expressed to describe our allegiance to many things. <laughs> Whether it be family, friends, objects, food, uh, like I love chicken wings or something like that, fashion, coffee, sports, vehicles. I love my truck. I love my fishing rods. I love my garden. I love my Weber barbecue. I love my bike. I love my kids. I love my spouse. I love my house. I love my shoes, etc., etc., etc. We use the word intermittently to express our feelings and emotions to various things that have attachments to us. In fact, in our diverse per perspectives, love is at times a feeling or an emotion. It, it can be at times a choice. Love can be at times a challenge. Love can be at times a perspective. Love can be at times a desire. And certainly love can be at times a necessity. We have made love many things in our lives. So, so it leads me to this question. So what is Paul truly saying to these Galatian Gentile converts about love being a fruit of the Spirit then? In order to answer that question, it's important to define, first of all, what is love? What is it? Now, the actual word love has many different definitions. In fact, the New Testament, which was written in Greek, has four distinct or different words that are used to define the English word love. So, before I give the four definitions, it's important to understand origin, context, and meaning before throwing around the same word, which in this case has four different meanings. The four Greek words to define love are, first of all, we'll look at eros, 
This is the intimate sexual love between married couples. We have storge or storge, however you want to say that. This is the love one has for their family. For example, a deep-rooted love that a parent has for their child or a deep-rooted love that a child has for their parent or perhaps a grandparent. Then there's philia, a deep emotional bond type of love expressed and lived out between most friendships. This is the type of love most believers express between each others, each other. And if not, we should be. And finally, we have this fourth definition is the word agape or agapo. This is the highest form of love that there is. This is an unconditional love, a love that never stops regardless of the context, the details, the hurt, the pain, the people, whether the love is reciprocated or not, etc. Agape love uh, sorry, agape loving someone is forever, regardless. I might add that this is difficult to achieve. Only with God's help can we actually do this. Jesse Cup, in his book, Unconditional, Liberated by Love, writes about agape love. He says this, you see, God has covenanted that he will love us no matter what happens. It is absolutely impossible to get God to love you any more or any less than he already does. You cannot fluctuate in infinite virtue. Extremely well said, by the way. So, those are the four biblical definitions of love. Paul, in this particular text, when speaking about the fruit of the Spirit, uses the word agapo or agape to describe the particular level of love being used or expressed here. Remember, Paul is referencing the virtues and the attributes of God, so it must be and has to be a level of unconditional love. So as believers in Christ, with the Holy Spirit indwelling us, Paul challenges us to cultivate and develop the agape love of God within ourselves. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit already exists within us as believers, and it isn't something that we hope to discover one day down the road. It's already within us. It's already there. Take a moment and, and say that with me. It's already there. So let me ask you this question today. Is expressing the attribute or virtue of love just about not doing the things the Bible forbids? Or is expressing the attribute of love a focus on becoming like God, honoring God, living for God, and doing for God? If we focus on the former, then we are not truly expressing love, but we are just living out perhaps a shallow perspective of emotional, non-eternal love. A love we give because we receive something back. Agape love that is developed in our lives is a love we give regardless if we receive it back or not. Have you, have you ever not given a gift because you may have said, well, I mean, they didn't give us gifts, so why should we give them gifts? This would be a conditional, emotional type of love, only giving if and when receiving. Now, if you're talking about me in relation to gifts, I'll take them. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so Paul is challenging these Gentile converts who, who remember, were being pushed toward a works only back to the law lifestyle to love even when there, there are no tangible, immediate, if ever, results. Agape love is not about someone else seeing you or someone else giving you a pat on the back. 
We have made it that way in our present culture and society. And yet, it is the furthest thing from the, this agape fruit of the Spirit love. It really is an under construction process for all of us to go through, isn't it? Do something nice, post it on social media, and then wait for the likes to be clicked. Agape love doesn't require that, doesn't even need that. Agape love does without expectation of anything in return. This agape love that Paul is challenging us and the Gentile converts with is certainly about being selfless, isn't it? The, the world doesn't li love this way. The world doesn't live this way. For many people, they love only to get something in return. Now, the believer in Christ is to do something similar, but certainly different in regard to loving others. We love others, and I want you to catch this, we love others so we can receive God's affirmation upon our lives. We never love others to receive the accolades from people. We love others to appease the heart of God. Such a significant difference, isn't it? Now, what is agape love? Well, it's unconditional love, but what, what really is it? <clears throat> Four things, actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. Agape love is, first of all, the love of God. In fact, it is God. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Love cannot get any deeper, any grander than the love of God for a separated humanity. A separated from God humanity, God loved us even when we were still sinners. God loved us even when we didn't deserve it. And Paul is challenging us to treat others the way God has treated us. Love, even when it isn't deserved. Agape love is, number two, a gift of God to us. Romans 5, verse 5 says, And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. When we received Christ, we received His agape love through the Spirit for other people. But not just the people we choose, but for all people. It truly is the greatest testimony to our walk with Jesus, isn't it? When we love all people, regardless of race and religion and color and background and origin, and by the way, let me just speak to this for a moment. Agape love is the counter to any racism issues that we face in our world today. You can't hate someone if you agape love them. Agape love is number three, the greatest thing in all of life, according to Jesus himself. Mark 12, 30, 31 challenges us with these words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and with all your strength. And then, then Jesus said, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who is my neighbor? My neighbor is all people. We have a responsibility to accept God's love and then to give that love back to him. And I want you to catch this. Give that love back to him through our lifestyle, through our expressions, and then demonstrate our love for God by loving the people around us. All oh, the great ex expression that you can offer God is by loving your neighbor, regardless of their race, their color, their religion. Agape love is number four, the greatest possession and gift that there is. 
Paul in writing to the Corinthians said this in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love, as stated earlier, must be the foundation or the hinge to which all other virtues exist. It is the greatest possession and gift that there is. This is what Paul is attempting to teach and preach to these confused Gentile converts who are being pulled in in two very distinct directions. And, And there is something bigger, greater, and more powerful than life itself, more powerful than physical or emotional love that is giving life away to other people through the unconditional agape love of God when we love others like God loved us, we will pray for people more. We will do things for people more. We will tell the good news story more. And we will give away the gospel message to those that need it more. See, physical or emotional love is specific to conditions. We will often love with the same level of love received. In other words, only giving what we get. This is about how it makes us feel, what it looks like, what it gives me, what it does for me. Notice the pattern of selfishness here. But biblical or agape God love is specific to zero conditions. How it makes me feel never matters. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it gives me. It doesn't matter what it does for me. Notice the pattern of selflessness here. So we have the constant battle of flesh and spirit here. Remember, two natures, right? Old nature, pre-salvation. New nature, post-salvation. Selfishness versus selflessness. It'll be a battle that we have until we meet Jesus, unfortunately. But through the help of the, and, the, and the power of the Spirit, we can overcome. Selflessness can triumph. We are challenged in this particular text to cultivate true, biblical, godly, Holy Spirit love for other people. In other words, our love should never change depending on the context of our company. As believers in Christ, being given God's nature through the person of the Spirit, we have a responsibility now to grow in the fruit of the Spirit beginning with love. John 15, 8 tells us this. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. When we bear or express or show others the fruit of the Spirit, it will communicate to others that we belong to Christ, that we live for Jesus, that we are his disciple. It's it's not about what we say that will tell them that. It's about the fruit that we bear that will tell them that. So here's a practical question today. What level of love are you demonstrating? What are people seeing, in other words? Is it a conditional love or is it an unconditional love? An agape love will not be achieved overnight but it is an incredible spiritual purpose to work towards as people under construction. In other words, lining up the heart, the internal, with the actions, the external, will take time, patience, effort, and of course, much prayer. Here's what I'm learning and discovering. Living out an agape love isn't so much about other people changing, but it is about our character, my character changing and becoming more like Jesus. I can't control what the other person says or does, but I can control what I say and what I do. 
So agape love isn't about love being reciprocated. Agape love in my life is about becoming more like Christ. So how do we know that we are cultivating and developing an agape love in our lives then? Well, 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 gives us a little insight to this question. Here's what it says. This is how we know that we love the children of God. Okay, catch this part right here, the second part of the verse. By loving God and carrying out His commands. And agape love begins with loving God and then simply put, and then doing what God asks of us. Paul tells these Gentile converts that there must be a demonstration of the fruit of the Spirit within their lives. Saying that we love God is wonderful, it's great. Thank you for declaring that. But where is the fruit of that proclamation? What character is being developed? Are we growing in the area of agape love? Paul is certainly talking about more than just following a few rules and regulations out of obligation and duty, isn't he? See, following rules and regulations does not and will not develop the spiritual condition or character of a person. Agape love will because it expects nothing in return. And that's hard when we've got old nature versus new nature. So it will grow us. It will mature us. It will teach us. It will shape us. So two things. We love God first. Primary, foundational. And we show God how much we love Him by, secondly, we love others second. And we do that with the same love as God grows us in agape love. With the same love that God loves us with, we love other people. 1 John 4 verse 7 says this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So because God loves us with an agape love, there is a tendency, and I want you to catch this, there is a tendency to believe that God is not just. In other words, that God will just give us what we want and when we want it and why isn't God showing up in almost a demanding type of approach. And when we, when we approach God that way, We're expecting him never to hold us accountable. But that isn't true love, is it? If we apply that principle to our parenting skills, to raising our children, okay, let's think about it for a moment. We would have given them everything they wanted and allowed them to do everything they asked, regardless if it was going to harm them or not. Sometimes the things kids ask their parents is going to harm them if we say yes as parents. And so we don't parent our children that way. Because God is love, God is also just. The two are synonymous. The two are attached. You can't separate them. Because God is love, God is also just. That means his agape love permeates every decision he makes regarding our well-being and our future. Everything God allows or disallows or, or blesses us with or holds back from our lives is permeated with an unconditional love for our lives and for our future. The virtue of love that expresses itself within our lives, coming from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, always desires to do what is right. Hence the battle we have on a daily basis. Sometimes it's a per minute basis or per hour basis, it seems. 
because the Holy Spirit indwells us, the agape love of God indwells us, everything the Spirit touches has to be right, therefore we're going to have a problem if our flesh, our old nature, is winning. There's going to be a battle that day. Because we have been given God's love, we are now filled with God's justness. This is why some days are more difficult than others. And even though it may be difficult, we still have the ability and even the responsibility to love other people the same way God loves us. We can do it. Through the person of the Holy Spirit, of course. We can't do it without God's help. We can't do it without God's power. We can't do it without God's strength. We can't do it without praying. We can't do it without reading the word. Let's ask God for his help to love other people with an agape love. We are under construction. And thankfully, God is growing our character by giving us the power to develop the fruit of the Spirit in and through our lives. Let's begin today applying this message to our lives by loving other people the way God loves us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the unconditional love that you have extended to us. There's nothing we can do to cause you to love us more, to cause you to love us less. You love us with an unconditional love, expecting nothing in return, but desiring allegiance, desiring praise and worship from us. I pray today, Lord, as you have loved us, that we would learn and live out and apply in our daily walk, loving other people, Agape, loving other people the same way you love us. And I pray, Lord, that, that you would help us even in those tough times, in those tough moments, in those altercations, in those maybe family disputes or disagreements. Lord, help us to permeate everything we say and do with an agape love so that we will always have the best interests of our families in consideration of what we say and what we do. Help us, Lord God, to love our families, to love our neighbors, to love our coworkers, our community, with an agape love, the same way you love us. We pray this today in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for, for joining us online today. We are under construction. We're in a process, we're in a journey of becoming more like Jesus. So I challenge you to apply this message to your life and allow the love of God, not just to embrace you, but to fill you so that you can love other people with the same love. God bless you and we'll see you next Sunday.